Anyway, thank you for coming. Uh, hopefully, we can give you some good information on sound reinforcement today and help you uh, do better in your in your jobs as well. I should give you some background on me. I'm the product manager at Yamaha for powered mixers, mixers, and loudspeakers. So for about 15 years, my job has been to listen to guys like you and try and make products that you'll want to use. One of them is what you'll get a chance to win tonight is our latest product. It's a all-in-one PA system. These types of things are made for you know folks who don't know so much about PA. I'm going to make a few of you upset you musician types. We're going to talk about you a little bit tonight, but I hope you'll understand it's all in a, to, to help you get the most out of your PA system. Um, the job of a sound guy is one of the worst jobs any of us will ever have, because on our best nights, we're not like the musicians. On our best nights, we hope nobody knows we were even there, right? And then but when you're a musician, you're like, look at me play guitar, watch me play drums. But when you're the sound guy, that's your best night. You go to see a great concert, you don't think anything about somebody's... You know, when you walk out, you only think about how great the show was. You don't think anything about that guy behind the board. So I hope if I teach you some things tonight, we can all learn to, to maybe be a little bit better sound person. Um, I'm going to teach you some basics. We're going to talk about stuff that doesn't have anything to do with buying Yamaha gear or, or spending more money. It might have to do with you guys thinking a little bit about what you do. So the first thing that a sound system is, in your sound system, isn't a microphone. It's me. It's the source. So if I talk real quiet, it really doesn't matter what microphone you give me. If, if you can't hear me, or if I'm complaining that I can't hear myself in the monitor, it's because I'm not speaking up. That's the first thing you need to know. So the first thing you want to do as a sound person is help those people that are on stage, your musicians, feel comfortable. That they can sing and be heard and not have to yell and scream where they're going to ruin their vocal cords over, over the course of the evening. But, but so they'll sing loud enough that your job will be easier. Sound is a really funny thing because it can't be measured like you can say, well, that's a white light. You know, sound is very uh, subjective. What I think sounds good might not sound good to you. <laughs> but we all know these certain things about sound. We all know when it sounds bad. <laughs> we all know what feedback sounds like. Does everybody know what feedback? Because let me get, you want me to put it? <laughs> we don't need to do that tonight. Okay. Um, but we, we know what we think sounds good. And the reason I even bring up about the, the, the sound system, it starts with the talker or the singer, then it goes through the electrical stuff that we're gonna talk about. But the last part of the sound system isn't a loudspeaker, it's you guys. It's those things on the side of your head. So we have to learn how to work with all that in our system. Now sound systems, the, in the simplest form, we're going to build one here tonight so we'll know just how things go and then we'll have a, a comfortable feeling of how easy it is to cable stuff together and make it work. But the two parts of the sound system that have the hardest job are the microphone because it's turning acoustic energy into electrical energy. That's a really tough job. Now there's a bunch of different microphones. There's a whole case full of them up there. This one happens to be wireless. So since we're all sound guys and we don't want to talk bad about the musicians that are here, use as few of these as you can. These are a chance for you to have everybody looking at you in the middle of the show. Well, we, didn't you change the battery? Oh, did you forget? Oh, is it the battery from last week? I don't know. We'll get another battery. I don't know if that's a good one. See what I'm saying? When you're shopping for a wireless, make sure that you're going to get a, somebody is going to have to go get a stick of batteries to make sure that it always works. Second part about microphones is there's tons of different kinds, like I said. Here's a, here's a $1,200 recording microphone for pianos for recording. You would never use this live. You know why? 
Because you could never do this with that microphone. Oh my goodness. If I'd have done this, Peter would ask me to leave. I, I think I'd be on my way out. You know. That's the reason why there's so many different types of microphones. But while we're on the subject, I want to let you know a couple of things. One rule, this is one rule you can all take with you. The closer you get the source to the microphone, the better off you're going to be. The more gain or volume we're going to get before any feedback. So, if you get somebody that sings like this, and you tell them, turn up the mic, turn up the mic, the chance of it going into feedback is a lot higher than if I could get them to just get up on that mic, okay? So get closer to the microphone. Now here's one for you guys who do talking or some of the church guys. Um, you've seen the lapel mics. Everybody likes those ones you see on CNN because they, they disappear and you don't have to worry about them. At CNN, they don't have a sound system. They don't care that the microphone is this far away from the source. So it's okay that they use those lavalier mics because they don't have feedback. We have these sound systems that cause ringing and feedback. We don't want that problem. Stay away from the lapel mic as much as you can. Two reasons. In a church, a lot of times there's vestments, there's robes that are worn, or a coat and a tie. These things can, every time, they'll move that lapel mic. Every time, and then you can't get a good sound because your sound check won't go as well. A mic like this, you see that lady wearing the microphone? It actually looks like a, a headband around the back of her neck. You can see it here. We'll, I'll leave it out so you can see it later. These head-worn microphones, you've seen Garth Brooks wear for one in concert, all that. It can never be shaken away from his face, and it's always this close to him. So you suppose they can get some gain out of that thing or volume before feedback? Absolutely. So this is key if you want a lot of gain. Some singers like to use the microphone. You know, they'll get up on it when they need to make a point and they'll back away from it when they don't. That's a sign of a pretty professional singer. Most of what we do as sound people is make me, the singer, comfortable at my microphone. So whatever type of mic you decide to get for them, whether it's a handheld type mic or one that would stay on a stand or one they'd wear, is all up to you as to what type you get. One thing I would recommend you stay away from is any mic with a switch on it. And here's the reason why. You're up here and you're gonna talk. And you're gonna, you're shooting the breeze with the keyboard player. And, oh, it's gonna be a great set. We're gonna do really good. And you start messing around with that switch. How many of you, come on. And then you go over there and you go, just a, it doesn't work. It's not working. It's not working. And the sound guy's like, because he can't see anything, you know. Meanwhile, it's that switch. Stay away from the switches. It'll save you. So, there's one other type of microphone that you need to understand about. This microphone's a dynamic microphone. It doesn't have any battery in it. These are really standard instruments that uh, you'll see in any of the uh, stores and on any stage. There's one other type of microphone. It's called a condenser microphone. You'll see them a lot of times, like this guy up here. This is for cymbals and uh, acoustic guitars, anything where you want to hear all of the nuances of something. The difference between that microphone and this one, or this one, is it requires a battery. Or, or on all your mixers, you'll see a switch called phantom power. Phantom power is not like a magic ghosty thing. All it is is the microphone manufacturers used to say, well, you just put a battery in there. And then they had the same problem wireless people do. If the battery was always dead, somebody always forgot to turn it on. So they got with the manufacturers of mixers and they came up with this standard called phantom power. So this phantom switch, you'll find it on most all the mixers and it powers those types of microphones. If you're worried and you think you might need it, just go ahead and turn it on. It's okay. It won't hurt this type of mic. It won't hurt any of this stuff to have it on, even if you're not sure. But Phantom doesn't make anything louder or any of that sort of thing. 